All right, here's a look at what we'll be doing today. We're going to add the ability for weapons to deal damage. I never got to that before, so I just want to go ahead and knock that out. So let's get right to it. All right, so the NPC is just using a basic add movement input at the end of the event tick. The NPC is not using update cameras because I'm not wanting to use the camera on the NPC. And I'm also making sure that the NPC does not want to strafe. All right, so I'm making that false. The weapon I got from the bridge, the Quixel Bridge, uh, it's a great place for a lot of free assets. I suggest checking it out. This is the animation I'm working with. Uh, so I want to go into the skeleton of the UEFN and under animation where it says preview, I want to change that default to use specific animation and just go ahead and choose the animation that I'm working with. All right, I'm going to search for the hand. I'm going to check and add a socket for the hand. I'm going to add a preview asset. This pickaxe, I'm just going to move it to the right location. Once you got that situated, I'm going to go back to the hand. I'm going to add another socket because I want the socket to move with the hand. So that's why I'm choosing the hand. So right click, add socket, name it something like pickaxe start. And let's go ahead and create another socket on the same hand and name it pickaxe end. All right, now let's go ahead and place those sockets on the pickaxe. Now, for if you were w wanting to do a sword, this is kind of what you would do. You would put the end at the tip of the sword. And then for the start, you would bring down the start above the hilt to where the blade starts. All right, and then you could have the start here. And the end there, and that would be good for a sword. But since we're doing a pickaxe, let's go ahead and make it match the pickaxe. All right, just go ahead and move those, and make sure you get you rotate your camera so that they're placed correctly. All right, and once you got that situated, we want to go back. Well, you, just, you can see that it's just moving along with the hand. So, now we want to create a notify that will deal damage. So we want to go to Blueprint Class, search for Anim Notify State, and then select that. We can name it something like Pickaxe Attack, underscore NS for Notify State. And then inside the animation, under notifi Notifies, on the 1, we want to add a Notify state in the 1 row. And then drag it to the end of where you want it to deal damage. You know, this is going to be for the length of the time you want to be able to deal damage during the animation. If this video is helping you, please think about hitting the like and subscribe button. Thanks. And so, open up that notify state, and under functions, override, choose received notify tick. And from the mesh comp, we want to sphere trace by channel. And the mesh comp needs to be plugged into all these world context objects. So from the mesh comp, we want to get socket location. These are the start and end of the pickaxes that we created. So we want to select F2, and then we'll select it, and then we can copy that name, and then paste that name to the socket name. And the return value, pickaxe start, we will drag into the start. And then let's go ahead and copy and paste that, or duplicate it, plug it into the mesh comp, and then we can change the start to end, or you can copy and paste it. That's safer. You can also trust yourself and type an end if you'd like. For now, we'll just choose a radius of about 10. And uh, we'll just see what this looks like if we go inside of the animation. All right, you can see that that is already working. Might be easier to see actually in the notify state, or in the, in the animation, to hover over the notify state. It'll be easier. And then. Let's change this to for one frame. 
because it's getting a little messy. There you go. Okay, so that's looking good. It might be a little small. We might change that radius to 20 later. So from the out hit, let's go ahead and break hit result and drop that down so we can see everything. And let's check if the actor that we're hitting is equal to the player character. And if it is, then we will deal damage. All right, so from that return value of the player character, plug that into the equals. And we want to search for the mesh comp. That is the variable of this notify tick. So you can search for that and plug that into the world context object. And we want to, from hit actor, apply damage. And we also want to have a branch coming from that equals. All right, so if we are trying, if the hit target is the player character, if that's true, then we will apply damage and then go into the return node. Let's clean this up a little bit. And then for the base damage, we can put whatever you like. I'm just going to put a thousand because this pickaxe is pretty legendary. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the sandbox character and then let's create an event for any damage just to see if this trace is working. And we can just do like a print string and we'll print it if the trace is working. Ouch, bro. What's up? Why are you hitting me? You know, anyways. Okay. All right, so forgot to, this is tracing visibility. So go into the sandbox character, select the mesh and make sure that the mesh trace response for visibility is block is blocking. So set that to true for block. All right, so let's create a collision sphere that will check if the player is in front of us. Select the mesh of the NPC and then click add and choose sphere collision to move it to the location like so and right click that and choose on component begin ever overlap event. And from other actor, let's cast a sandbox character. And then after that, let's play in a montage. Okay, so this will only play if we overlapped with that sandbox character. And make sure that that animation we're working with, right click it, and create an montage, and add that montage to here. And let's go ahead and add that pickaxe. If you'd like to see a better way to add weapons, go ahead and check out my video on that. I'll click on the card there. But for now, we can just add a static mesh and choose the pickaxe and then choose the hand socket that we created earlier and placed. And then let's move this sphere out a little bit so he'll swing, swing a little bit sooner and change this radius to 20. So we have a little bit more forgiving sphere trace. Let's go ahead and have some fun. Let's duplicate one of these retargeted characters that are retargeting from the sandbox character. Let's change it to the NPC. Let's go to class settings, parent class, let's change it to NPC. Now this was a duplicated. I duplicated it, opened it up, and then changed the class to the NPC instead of the sandbox character. And there we go. Ouch, bro, what's up? It's working. All right, so thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Take care.